evolution of the industry has changed to where record keeping is tremendously more important. Made a new rule and everybody had to start keeping records. Everything's documented. In this video, we're going to talk about application records, how to easily convert a recommendation into an application record, and even show you some of the advanced features of our customized load sheets. Let's get started. I want to come back now and talk about how to use some of the more advanced features of this application detailed record. In order to do so, I'm going to go ahead and start back from the beginning. So I'm going to delete this second one that I added as an example. I'm going to get back to the way things were uh, when I first started the recommendation. So here's where I started. I had the details of where I was going to spray and it defaulted to the particular dates. I didn't have any applicators or equipment, but let's say I want to go ahead and create a load sheet that I could now take to uh, my guys to show them what I want to spray and where. Now there's a couple of ways that people will do that. Maybe you want to break it out to where you have a load sheet for each individual field and that way you can record what was done at each individual block how it was performed, who did the work, and you have a written record that it was completed so that you know what to do if you were to leave off in a particular place and you have a written record. Some folks like to have a separate record by block or field. Others like to put it all on one record. Our load sheets will support that. Let's take a look at what a load sheet is to begin with. So I haven't put any details here yet, but I'm going to go ahead and just show you what a load sheet looks like. So I'll hit the print load sheet button and it will print a load sheet for just this one detail. A load sheet contains information of who's going to be doing the work, what products are going to be used, and what fields are going to be sprayed. Now, the cool thing about load sheets is it has other information as well, such as if you want to do row and banding. Are you hitting all rows, every other rows, or just specific rows? Do you want to have a tank size for a 400 gallon? and a different size tank on the same load sheet to be able to accommodate multiple sized equipment? And is it important to be able to record changes, safety equipment, whether the work was complete, and if this information is actually recorded in your food safety system? All of this can be easily managed on your load sheet. Load sheets are identified with the application record number as well as a detail number down here at the bottom this D001. Now that you've seen what a load sheet looks like, let's go back to the application record and see how we could customize this load sheet to support the way that I work. I'll close the new window that appeared and it leaves me right where I left off. Let's say I want one load sheet to be able to have all of my fields on one load sheet and I want to be able to uh, include the dates. I'm going to add a team of applicators because I have two guys out there uh, that are spraying. So I have those automatically on there. Looks like I added an additional row. You can see I have a blank row here and I have the two applicators there. If I want to delete that blank row, I just can hit remove applicator. I can put in the information here or leave it blank. And now um, I can put individual notes for just this specific detail. Now we have a note section here at the bottom, but these notes do not print on the application record that would be used for audit purposes or that you may share with others outside of your organization. These notes on the detail are only for your purposes and they actually print on the detail. So this would be a great place to put application specific details such as nozzle packages or specific uh, uh, instructions for cutting off nozzles around certain blocks or perhaps you want to provide timing instructions such as half dry before nightfall. You can put any of those specific detail notes here. Row and banding is automatically adjusted here when I select the field. So if I want to go ahead and adjust row and banding, I can do so in this section here. You'll remember that when we adjust row and banding or percentage, it automatically calculates the total product required for you. Do we want to hit all rows, every other row, or do I want to specify which rows to use? If I want to specify my uh, RPM or my gear speed, pressure, or maybe choose a different size tank, half of the size of a 400 gallon tank would be a 200 gallon tank, or maybe I have a 300 gallon tank would be three quarters of a 400. This is great for partial tank mixes or for different sized equipment, either way. I can put in that information that we saw on the load sheet here in this row and it pertains to this detail. This is detail 001. 
I could print the load sheet or the posting at the same time so that I have my posting ready to go before the work takes place, my load sheet to give to the guy so that they can go do the work, and everything relates back to the application record so that when that record is received at the office, it's easy to enter. Let's take a look at the load sheet now. Here the load sheet has the equipment uh, and applicator information as well as any of the gear speed or uh, PSI's nozzle package information if I selected it. It has the gallons per acre that I selected and which rows to hit as well as the specific notes for that detail. Here's where we have both the 400 gallon tank and the 300 gallon tank options. If you want to select the lot numbers for the particular products, if you're keeping inventory or you're required for your safety protocol to keep the lot numbers of the specific product in addition to the EPA, we give you a place to be able to record those. And here's where the guys can make a remark if there were any changes where they scratch in, oh, we swapped out this product for that product, or we cut off the rate per acre to something different because we got a phone call from the fieldman that said to make an adjustment, and we did that in real time. Of course, we want to record that the workers used all the proper safety equipment and, and proper cleaning protocols, and whether or not they completed the work. They can also monitor the completed work on a field by field basis. Maybe they didn't get through the Skylar Rays and so that's not complete. They're going to come back the next day and go ahead and complete that. That allows the manager to review this information before he approves it to be able to move on to the recording stage. And then of course the finally recording stage that shows that yes, I've actually taken this detail and I put it into the system. It's been recorded. I can file it away and the work's been done. This is one load sheet for three fields and it works very well for operations that prefer to do things that way. Some of our, our uh, customers prefer to have a separate load sheet for each block. We support that as well. Let's show you how to do that really quickly. I'll go ahead and close out this new window that opened and it takes me right back where I left off. You can see that I have all of my blocks on a single detail. Well if I want to have a separate load sheet for each block, all I need is a separate detail. And so just as I showed you, you can come through and add additional details or copy details. You can use that functionality to create your own details, or you could use the split by fields button to split this detail by fields. Split by fields takes the detail that I already created and just copies it over and over and over again, one for every field. Now it's important that you know that the process does indeed copy all of the attributes of that detail. So if you want to have different applicators or different notes or different rows or different pressures, you'll want to make sure to not have that filled in when you get started because as you could notice, I have Lappin's rows 18 through 52, Rainier's 18 through 52, all with the same pressures and all with the same team. That may not be the way that I want to do it. So if I want to undo what I just did, I'll hit the undo split fields. Are you sure? I sure am because I don't want it that way. It takes me right back the way it was. Now I want to go ahead and just hit all rows, clear out that information. Maybe I want to go ahead and leave that the same, but I want to have different teams, so I'm going to remove some applicators here. So I have this the way that I want it. I'm only going to replicate just the information that I have here and then I can come in and customize each detail for different tank configurations, different nozzle packages, or hitting the various rows of my blocks. Let's go back to split the fields. Now we're going to copy this exact detail right on over and I can add in the specific details necessary. Now that I've customized and adjust each individual block for the specific horticultural practices or recommendations associated with that location, I can print the load sheets. I can select all load sheets here, and as soon as I've selected them all, I have a print all and a summary posting available to me. What that allows me to do is rather than print an individual load sheet and an individual posting, I can print them all at once, just trying to save you time. Here I have an individual load sheet for detail one showing just the Lappins and the attributes that I selected for the, for the Lappins. Remember, that was just rows 18 through 52. On the next page, I have a different applicator 
for the Rainier field, hitting all rows. And finally, my Skylar Rays, hitting every other row with a different applicator. You'll notice that the details are all recorded right here after the application record, so that when these papers come back all mixed up in various orders, it's really easy to get them entered into the system. The guys will just put in the number of gallons that they sprayed for each field and that they completed the work. Once those come back to the office, it's very easy to just find that detail, put in the number of gallons, and hit finished. Temperature, I'm done. I've completed the detail for the Lappins. I'll repeat that for these other selections and the records are all complete. So hopefully this video has been helpful for you to show you how you can use just the basic functionality as well as the more advanced functionality of load sheets and individual details by blocks. Aprex is flexible to work the way that you work. Make it easy for you by trying it out finding what works for you and if you have any questions feel free to give us a call shoot us an email or use this helpful contact section here at the top where you can chat with an operator or go ahead and pull up a help file right here we thank you for using aprex have a great day